Hello everyone, and welcome to a new kind of video that I'm going to be doing, or maybe doing on this channel. And it's going to be me and Gavin, say hello. Hi. <laughs> Insert yourself promo, please. Oh, what? Insert yourself no, promo. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming my link will be in the description. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we're going to be doing a Premier League prediction. Every week we're going to predict the week's fixtures. And, I don't know, maybe we'll keep, like, a points tally and see who gets more right in a certain amount of time. Yeah, well, I'm sick, so I'm gonna win. Yeah, like, he's sick in the head, like, he has, um, parental How can you s <laughs> Joking about mental health isn't cool anymore. Triggered. Anymore? So what was, it, was it cool at one point? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the 70s did it and shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> all, all right. This is starting to turn into a shit show. Alright, alright, So, all right. let's, 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 um, let's talk about the fantasy, some fantasy shit first. So, the both oh, of us have right. assembled a Premier League fantasy team. So. Yes. Um, let's start out with who we have in net. Name both your keepers. David De Gea, the best goalkeeper in the world. And Mandanda, the Crystal Palace goalkeeper coming in from Marseille, I believe it was. Ooh, and yeah, it was Marseille. So, I've got Casper Schmeichel as my starting keeper. And Victor Valdez on the bench. <laughs> that's that's brave. The draft legend. You want to name your <laughs> defense? I have Dijan Lovren, because why not? <laughs> Kyle Walker, Wes Morgan, the first ever Jamaican to win the Premier League. Ooh. Jose Font, a very, very underrated, very, very solid center back. Much like Ashley Williams, I'd say. Yeah. And um, Luke Shaw, who, if he has a fit season, he's probably going to be the best left back in the league. <laughs> Keep dreaming. I'm not even joking, honestly. Like, he was Canadian. he was the best left back <laughs> until he got his injured. All right, I'll tell you who the best five defenders in the league are going to be this year. It's going to be Virgil van Dijk, because he's been the best defender in the league for the past couple of years. Four he was only in the league for one season. Two. He, just he got signed season. last year. No, that was his first season. No, that was his second he has two no. team of the years with Southampton. He only has one. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking fight you on this. Um, John. No, because Steph... they had Toby Alderweireld in 1415. Mm. John Stones. I also have him. Joel Matip. Yeah. Eric Bertrand Bailey, and Kyle Walker. Brian Bertrand. No, no, Eric Bailey. Eric Bertrand Bailey. Yeah, you said Eric. You said Eric Bertrand Bailey. <laughs> yeah, that's his name. Wait, wait, seriously? His full name. His middle name is Bertrand? I believe so. Who right. the fuck names a kid Bertrand? Let's All right, look whatever. this up. Eric Bertrand... <laughs> yeah, Eric Bertrand Bailey. Alright, I'm assuming you're editing this part out. <laughs> wait, they can't see it. <laughs> they, they, right. won't, they won't see my fucking little Googling skills. Alright. Who wants... You, you want to go for your midfield? Alright, alright, alright. I got Danny Drinkwater. Yeah. Coquelin. Coquelin. Deli Ali, Kevin De Bruyne, and Paul Pogba. That's a pretty weak midfield, if I'm on. <laughs> um, wow. It, it, it's a decent midfield, I'll give you that. It's better but than yours. I am going with Riyad Mahrez, Nemanja Matic, um, Id Idrissa Gueye, um, Granit Xhaka. That's, and, that's a good signing, Gueye. Yeah, and Pierre Emile Huijberg. That's risky. No, it's not. He's a good player. He played really well for Schalke last year. Yeah, well, he didn't really impress um, Ancelotti enough to stay in the Bayern side. No one I feel like it takes An Ancelotti, though. No one impresses Ancelotti, okay. Like, you can't, you can't fucking argue with that. Ivanovic impressed Ancelotti. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty debatable. I think, <laughs> I think he paid him off there. That There's no way. Mm. There's got to be some fucking money involved. You want to name off my strikers? Yes. Alright, alright. I have Charlie Austin, who last time he had a full season in the Premier League, scored 19 goals for KPR. Um, with Gratio and Pelle out, he should be the main man for Southampton at the top, being rotated with Shane Long. I like that duo. Wait, Graziano uh, Pelle? Yeah, Graziano Pelle. He uh, moved to China. to China. I know. I said, sh now he's gone, Charlie Austin's going to get the main oh, spot. Uh, um... <laughs> I also have Andre Gray uh, coming from non-league like Jamie Vardy. Uh, top goal scorer with Burnley last season in the championship. Also got player of the year. 
Oh. And then to top it all off, I have Sergio Aguero, and he needs no introduction. I, I, I rate all of those signings actually, but I think my three are a bit better. Got it. Wow. Got to break right. it to you, bud. Um, right. I'm going for Premier League top goal scorer last year, Harry Kane, who was actually on my bench. That's... After the Euros, he had. Come on, man. Come on. Oh, all right. The Euros, he was on set pieces. Give him a break. Um, Jamie Vardy, uh, one of the best strikers in the Premier League last year, and Sergio Aguero, one of the best strikers in the Premier League last year. Okay then. <laughs> yeah, I just I went I went all out on my strikers. I like my team. I had a couple, I had a lot more Leicester players. I had Fuchs and Morgan and Drinkwater, but they were just you can only have three Leicester players. Oh, I'm probably gonna try and squeeze Mahrez in since it looks like he's staying at Leicester. <laughs> yeah, uh, I had to get Mahrez and Vardy and Schmeichel so. It was a shame. But anyway, let's get into the actual purpose of the show. Let's get into some Premier League predictions. All right. First match. Holy the first match of the season. It's um, the team that got promoted to playoffs versus the Premier League winners. So, I'm predicting Leicester to win this game. I think everyone is. Um, I don't know, man. That that whole that lack of managerial presence in that whole city side. Ooh. This yeah, sounds yeah. very dangerous. Yeah, they really do. And all the quality they've brought in. All the Premier League proven players. Just like yeah, who's Who's going to be walking out whole city? Like, who's managing them for this game? The assistant manager. I think he's the interim is, manager. Is the assistant manager still there? I think so. I don't think they picked any interim manager, though. It's going to be someone. <laughs> I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe the chairman's going to yeah, walk maybe, out. And, maybe the chairman's daughter on the touch or something. Better than no. But one. um, <laughs> I'm yeah, a with, two with, win for Leicester. I mean, yeah, you, the whole city's such a mess right now. I think they're gonna struggle to get more than like four wins this season. So yeah, the Premier League champions are gonna win by far, like three 0 easily. Yeah, two two nil, three nil. So, yeah. and then we've got Crystal Palace and West Brom. Um, this is a this is gonna be a close game, I feel, but I'm gonna say it ends I, in a one draw. I can't think of a more boring fixture than this, yeah, I, honestly. I don't think I can. Tony Pules, all he likes to do is defend, so... What the fuck's gonna happen? Um, I'm looking at that predicted Crystal Palace lineup. I mean, Andrews Townsend, Zaha, Belasi. Um, They're still missing that striker, uh, so goals may be a bit of a problem. So yeah, I think it's gonna be low scoring, especially with West Brom. I honestly think West Brom might take this 2-0, though, because I, I, I'm a big fan of Solomon Rondon. I think, um, I think he's good. I think I, I really rate Rondon, but he's not in a system where he's going to get forward and score a bag of goals. So I'm predicting a 1-1 draw. I think Crystal Palace are going to nick it because of Zaha and Townsend, just their true quality. And um, West Brom are going to get a fucking set-piece goal like they always do. So I honestly just don't trust an Allen Pardew side after everything that's happened. He's, he's such a inconsistent manager. Like, I don't know. It's it's really hard for me to predict an Allen Party win. Especially <laughs> after what happened in 2016. Because the Palace only getting two wins. Yeah, that's... They, they, they got some big signs coming in. Um, It's curious to see if they're going to bounce back from that and get some wins together. Yeah, it's, uh, that's the first match we don't agree on. Who will be right? Time may never tell. Honestly, um, that's one <laughs> Now, um, we've got Burnley FC and Swansea City. Now, um, even though I think Burnley are going to get relegated this season, I think they're going to edge this one over Swansea, mostly because Swansea are a decent Premier League side, but with all of the signs coming in, there's no clear identity or system as to what the team's going to be playing with, so I think it's going to be a bit of an identity crisis for Swansea at the start, and I feel like it's going to be a slow start, so I think Andre Gray's Burnley side is going to edge this one. That's a very interesting prediction. I'm going to go with 2-1 to Swansea. Alright, well, Swansea's... excuse me some more. <laughs> Swansea have some quality players. Leroy Fur was a good signing. He's not the person they need right now. I do agree. Swansea will struggle, but... Leroy Fur is a great signing. I think he could help chip in a little bit. Gilfie Sigurdsson's a proven set piece um, master. He, he that that Jack score. Cork Leon Britton midfield looks slow though, in my opinion. Yeah, it looks really slow. They need a little bit 
they ju they just need a little bit of work all around as a side. But I can't see Burnley scoring more than one, and if it's one, I'm gonna say Andre Gray scores it. They just don't have Premier League quality in their team. Yeah, the owners just don't like to invest whenever Burnley get promoted. It's a shame. I just wonder how much longer Sean Dyche is going to stay that this keeps on going. I mean, you looked at what Steve Bruce did um, leaving <laughs> with all the <laughs> speculation on ownership going on. Um, next up, we have Everton and Tottenham, though. That's going to be an interesting game. It's going to be a good game. I'm going to predict a 2-0 win for Tottenham. Now, see, I want to say this is a 1-1 draw because... Um, Looking at Everton to the preseason, what Koeman's been trying to do, um, first and foremost, is return that defensive stability um, into Everton. So they haven't been the best going forward, but I think Lukaku, Dave, Lou Barkley, Morales, they're good enough to maybe nick one. Um, but I really think this is a team that Tottenham are going to struggle to score against. Um See. Pochettino, I, I rate him. He's one of the top managers in the Premier League, no doubt. I do too as well, but Ronald Koeman is also one of the top managers in my opinion. I see, but he's got a much better squad. He's got a younger squad, so he's only going to get better from last season. Um, Deli Ali, Eric Dyer, they ha still have Jan Vertonghen, Toby Alderweireld, who were both extremely talented and both in great form from last season. Kyle Walker's a good player. Danny Rose is still a very good player. See, where I think Tottenham are going to go out there for the win, I think this is a game that Everton will try and get a draw, maybe nick a goal. Like, this this is at Goodison Park, we can't forget. Goodison Park is used to be a very hard place to play. I'm sure Raw Koeman might want to rebuild that fortress atmosphere. Um, it's going to be a close match, no matter which yeah. way it goes, in my opinion. I, I say it's going to be a close 2-0. You know, it's not going to be one of those 2 nils where, oh, Tottenham really could have smashed them. They took more chances. I think it's going to be, it was 1-0 for a while, and then maybe everything get caught out at the end. Yeah, that, that sounds like it could happen. I'm going to stick with the draw, though, on my end. Now we've got Middlesbrough and Stoke City. Two very underrated sides, in my opinion. The mighty Stoke Alona. <laughs> Stoke Alona. Um... I'm gonna predict. I'm gonna predict a very close two to one win for Stoke. I think Middlesbrough are really gonna show up. I think they're gonna prove to themselves that they're no pushover in the Premier League. But I do think Stoke are gonna be a little bit better than them. Middlesbrough do have a lot of momentum coming up uh, second in the Championship. They've had a very very good preseason. They brought in some great players. The problem with Stoke. Uh, my like Stoke are so hard to predict. They're they're very inconsistent. You never know when players like Arnautovic, Shakiri, and Bula are going to show up. Yeah, that's a very um, good point. But I feel like uh, if Stoke want to try and push to get close to Europa League, I think this is a game they literally like. I think this is one of those types of games that they have to just take the three points and not mess around. I think you're right. I'm gonna go two one Stoke. Yeah. All right, now we find since we finally agreed, um, now we've got Southampton and Watford, um, two pretty good sides. Southampton arguably with a better side though, despite losing a lot of players like Sadio Mane, and um, you know, just over the years they've lost so many players. But I'm gonna go with a one-one draw. I'm looking at the predicted Southampton lineup, and it's interesting that they're saying Redmond's gonna be playing up top alongside Shane Long. That's quite interesting. Redmond, he's a great wide man. Yeah, see, that's that's what I'm thinking about now. And um, the the new Watford manager, Mazzari, he's he's a big fan of the three five two. Um, I'm I'm a bit worried about Watford because they brought in a manager who just managed big teams in Napoli and Inter, but he hasn't had a job in two years and he's coming into the Premier League and Watford could easily suffer from second season syndrome, so this is a very risky job. And looking at the Southampton lineup, they have long red men who are very capable of penetrating from wide areas. I feel like I feel I like Southampton will edge this one over Watford. I don't feel Redmond has the strength to play up top in the Premier League. Yeah, but I think he's going to be drifting out wide to explore the space, because Mazzari is probably going to play his 3-5-2 that he loves. If not, then he's going to be trying to create a new system in competitive football, and that's, again, really risky. Gonna be a, it's going to be a good game there. And then the last game of the day t for tomorrow, Man City versus Sunderland. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm predicting 3-1 City. I'm predicting a David Moyes masterclass, 5-0 Sunderland. <laughs> no, um, I'm probably going to triple captain Aguero for this game, so I'm I'm hoping 3-0 and Aguero grabs a couple. Yeah, I'm, I think there's not too much doubt in this game. If Sunderland want to prove me wrong, go ahead, but... Um, what I will say about City is that they're they're still struggling to get Guardiola's still struggling to get that new system in the city. Like they they don't look completely comfortable with it. Um, when I was watching the City Arsenal game, um, but I still think there's enough quality um, for for City to get the win here. And I am starting John Stone, so I really hope they keep a clean sheet. Um, <laughs> and then for Sunday's games, Bournemouth and Man United. I'm predicting eight nil Bournemouth. Man United uh, get relegated. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> if that happened, we deserve to get relegated right away. No, nah, I'm going to go... Uh, I'm going to go 3-0 United. Really? Yeah. Um, United haven't had the best preseason. Um, Pogba is actually suspended this game due to uh, yellow card accumulation in the Italian Cup. Yeah. So so he's not available right away, and um, you look at that midfield partnership because Mourinho's probably going to play that four two three one that he loves so much. It's either going to be Carrick and Herrera, and Herrera doesn't really work as midfield too because he doesn't have the athleticism as a defensive midfielder. Don't forget and, Schneiderlin. Yeah, I don't think Schneiderlin's going to get the start though. I don't think he had that good of a preseason. I think it's either going to be Herrera or Fellaini alongside Carrick, and then Fellaini can't pass the ball for shit unless he's passing to Jamie Vardy. <laughs> yeah, but I, I I think we can both agree Man United are going to win, though. I think it's going to be close. I mean, the, the system still isn't completely there. Uh, it's, at the start of the season, it's definitely going to be a bit of a grind for Manchester United. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's going to be 2-1, a really close game. Yeah, I, ha- I haven't been watching the Man United uh, preseason quite as much as... Uh... Gavin has been, so... Probably, yeah, I'm a United fan, so... <laughs> probably a bit better, but I've got those Leicester predictions down, because that's my Premier League team. I would love a 3-0. That'd be great. Yeah. And then we've got Arsenal and Liverpool for the second match of that day. I oh. am going to go with a 2-1 win for Liverpool. Honestly, I think it's going to be an absolute thrashing. Looking at the Arsenal center uh, center back partnership with Holding and Callum Chambers. Oh Jesus, I didn't see that. Yeah, because Koscielny's out, Mertesacker's out, Police is out. <laughs> um, then I'll go three one Liverpool. I think I'm gonna go four uh, two. And I don't. I think this will be one of the only losses of the season where it's not Wenger's fault. Because he can't do anything about that. I mean, he could have brought in a decent center back, but... Yeah, Wenger could have made signings for the past three seasons, but it's not his fault, is it? All right, so never mind. It's still <laughs> it's still Wenger's fault, but... Yeah, um, I I like the new... I, I like the look of the new um, Liverpool side. Very, very pacey in the midfield going forward. Firmino as a false nine calls prompts. I was saying before, you remember that 3-3 game? Very, very exciting. Yeah, One was... of the best matches of the season. I, I'm a Milan fan, like, that's my primary club here, and I was watching the Milan-Liverpool game, it was, it was a preseason game, and Firmino looked really good, um, I think Markovic had a really underrated preseason, I think Markovic was really good, I think he got a couple assists at least. He's a very, very talented player, he was all known at, um, was Fred it Fenerbahce last season, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I think, I think you gotta give Markovic a shout, at least off the bench. Yeah, uh, I think I think uh, Jurgen Klopp's gonna really like Markovic for the pace and work rate he has. Um, yeah, I, I see this being four two. Uh, Liverpool conceding just cause Arsenal do have all their starters in the final third, and Liverpool do get caught out with their Gagan pressing. So yeah, it's gonna be an exciting game no matter what. But it, I think the the centre back partnership is just gonna collapse. Yeah, and then. Last game of the Premier League opening week, Chelsea versus West Ham. I am going to say a 2-2 draw. It's, this is hard to tell. <laughs> yeah, it's it's going to be a very close game, I think. I mean, let me see the predicted Chelsea lineup. Because um, last season, I remember West Ham really played Chelsea hard every game. I think they drew one and won one last season against West Ham. 
or against Chelsea. They're predicted to go four at the back, um, which makes sense considering they only have the two center backs right now. Um, uh, as as good as Conte is tactically, this, this he doesn't normally go four at the back, so I feel like tactically he can be a bit out of his depth. Yeah. Maybe a little bit. Uh, I mean, Conte is a great manager, so it, it wouldn't surprise me if he did surprise me and um, <laughs> grind out a result this game. But with the center back problems, I think I'm going to have to go West Ham, especially uh, out of... Actually, no, it is at Stanford Bridge, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's at Stanford yeah. Bridge, this game. All right, yeah, I'm going to have to go 2-1. 2-1 to Chelsea? 2-1 to Chelsea, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going. I'm sticking with my guns. Two-two draw. And those are all the results. Well, those are all the games for this week. Anyway, guys, if you've enjoyed this video and you would like to see more of this, and maybe give us a name for this kind of podcast thing. Um, sausage party. Yeah, sausage party. You know we love a good sausage party. <laughs> but um, anyway, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please smash a like on it. Tell me down in the comments below how we could improve this series. Do you have any final remarks for us, Gavin? I'm better than you. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, peace out. Have a nice sausage party.